nights. With Poe and Monroe. You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe. And Monroe. That gets me every time. Lucky we're not in the shower, then. Why do girls always get stabbed in the movies? I think it's a metaphor. Having said that, I'm an equal opportunity stabber. Oh, pointy. How very noble. And on that note, what's next, Monroe? It's on the schedule, silly. I know that. I'm just making it sound like you have a choice. Okay, then. What shall I choose? Let me see. I choose dreams and nightmares. Dreams and nightmares. With no, wait. Poe and Monroe. I choose Poe's Curiosity Shop. Welcome to Poe's Curiosity No, I've changed shop. my mind again. I choose dreams and nightmares. Dreams and nightmares. With Poe and Monroe. Excellent choice, Monroe. I didn't have one really, did I? You always have a choice, Monroe, but that doesn't mean you can change things. Do you think anyone's listening? Of course. We're the only radio station in August. And if you're just passing through, we mean August the town, not the month. What else are people listening to? Radio 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, each other? But we have something they don't. What's that? You. Shush, Po, you'll get tongues wagging. Indeed. Talking of tongues that wag, we have a caller. Are you ready for a dream? My whole life. Frankie, you're live with Monroe. Hi, Frankie. What a beautiful voice you have. Well, thank you. I think all voices are beautiful. What do you think to Poe's voice? I hate it. Okay. So, what's your dream, listener? I'm in August, and wherever I go, all I can hear is the radio. It's everywhere. It's loud and relentless, but there's this... bird. She cuts through the noise and guides me. I listen to the bird, and I fall blissfully asleep. That's very interesting. People dream about their surroundings a lot. And a dream within a dream? That's nothing to worry about either. What do you think, Poe? I think you have a hardcore fan, Monroe. What did the bird look like, Frankie? Beautiful. Angelic. But it's trapped in a cage. A prison. But there's only one warden. And the warden is weak. There's a warden? Another bird. With a rumbling voice that makes me angry. It plumes its feathers, but my bird? The one that calls me? She's not interested in him. And she's caged. Munro, this is obviously a prank. He's talking about us and trying to be funny. But it's a dream. I never said it was a dream. Well, I think um, we've had quite enough of this. Listen to the ward and jangling his keys. Don't you see he's imprisoned you, Ellis? Well, um, Frankie, we don't use our first names on air, so I'm just going to stop you there. I've cut the call. Is that a good idea? Well, what was I supposed to do? Help him. He needed help. Don't encourage him, Ellis. These kinds of things must be nipped in the bud. Are we still live? Sorry, listeners. This was a very strange call. I hope you'll agree. Frankie, if you're still listening, I do apologize for Poe. He can get very protective. I kind of get your analogy now. Do I, Monroe? Very well, then. 
Standing down. Oh, listeners, we've upset him now. Poe's got all frowny face. What are you doing? I'm stretching. Is that allowed? Of course. I just thought, you should relax. Sit. Close your eyes, maybe. And what if I don't? You'd have to punish me, wouldn't you, Mr. Warden? Ellis, I... I've been very naughty. There's no time for this. We've got three minutes. I might hurt you. Now you're talking. I've, I've got a headache. Never mind. I was just trying to have some fun. Wait. I, I can't take it anymore. What's this? Someone pushed it under the door. I'm going to kill you. Still in the mood? What the hell, Paul? Why were you hiding this from me? It's just some psychotic listener, that's all. Frankie? Not necessarily. We have lots of psychotic listeners. How can you joke about this as a death threat? It's clearly a death threat. I knew it would upset you, but I'm an old hand at this, Alice. People see you as a celebrity. It makes them do abnormal things, but they're just normal people. When did you find it? Someone slipped it under the door. Just now? Well, yes, but it's nothing to worry about. We've been getting them for the last few weeks. Weeks? Maybe a month. So that could be a killer behind the door. Maybe, but never when I've looked. Oh. It isn't locked, Alice. People can just walk in anyway. Did you want to have any locks? I don't think it's necessary. Oh. Do you ever get the feeling the radio station is... is cursed? No more than the rest of August. Maybe we should call it a night. And abandon our listeners? Munro, this isn't like you. I just have a really bad feeling about this. I think something terrible is going to happen. Shh, Alice. I can feel your heart racing from here. Everything will be fine. I don't think so. Come on, we're alive. I think I'm gonna go home. Don't be like that. How could you keep this from me? I thought you cared about me. What if I'd been killed? You know, I'd never let anyone hurt a single hair on your head. Well, that's not entirely true, is it? I don't know what you mean. You know exactly what I mean. Let's not get into that now. We're back with our listeners in three, two, You'd have been a sacrificial shish kebab if it wasn't for me. <laughs> oh, Bo, that sounds like a great story, but it'll have to wait, because we're back with our listeners and more dreams and nightmares. Okay, who's our next listener? It's Frankie again. Put him through. Frankie, you're live with Monroe. I didn't finish what I had to say. I'm sorry about that. You can carry on now. Sometimes the radio gets too much. It makes me... frustrated. So I go into the belly of the beast, and I hide, and I listen, and I wait. So this is a dream that breaks into other dreams. Of course, there are no segues for dreams. Poe? The belly of the beast. Have you been leaving messages, Frankie? Yes, John. Yes, I have. Have you been getting them? What did the messages say?
I see. And why would you dream about wanting to kill me, Frankie? It's not a dream, John. I'm coming for you. And Alice. I don't think you are. I think you're spinning us an impish tale, Frankie. You write your little notes and dream your little dreams. But you're not brave enough to act on them, are you, Frankie? Pooh, stop it! What are you waiting for, Frankie? We're sitting ducks! Don't worry, Monroe. He's just bluffing. Don't! I'm not hiding, Monroe. You're going to get yourself killed. Hide. Hide. And scene. I hope you enjoyed, fair listeners. Everything you just heard was an elaborate fiction. The first of many fictional dramas on dark nights with Poe and Munro. It's done. It was self-defense, Al. We will never talk of this again. Ever. Let's just go. When I was 12, my father died. He was riding his bike to work and he got hit by a bus, a school bus, my school bus. It was all over very quickly, but I was at the back of the bus and I could see everything. He didn't move, didn't get up, died instantly. image of it somehow stayed with me. You think? It doesn't anymore. I couldn't tell you what it looked like. Mother told me a secret. There's a way that you can make your memories disappear. Can you make today disappear? No. But you can. Pick one of these. Now hold it tightly in your hands and close your eyes. Now what? Think of your most troubling memory from this evening and imagine the object you're holding is there. Picture it so you can see it. Okay. You have to make yourself believe that the object is there. Okay, it's there. Now open your eyes. Now what? Throw it away. When you throw it away, it will take that memory with it. 
And if it doesn't? It definitely will. Finally tonight, police are appealing for anyone who might know the whereabouts of 35-year-old veterinarian Francisco Bilson. Um, Mr. Bilson was last seen by his wife a couple of nights ago at um, around 7 o'clock before returning to his office on Trosses Street. Please contact the... Um... The August Police Department if you're able to help. And that's your August update with Poe. And Monroe. So what's next, Monroe? Nightmares. And dreams. Dreams. And nightmares. With Poe and Monroe. Are you okay? I'm not feeling that well. But we do have a caller waiting. I'm sorry, maybe some other time. Don't worry. I'll take this first one. It's Frankie. Don't mess with me, Paul. It is Frankie. Put him through. <clears throat> Frankie, you're alive. I mean, Frankie, you're alive with Monroe. Who is this? It's Frankie. Thank you for what you did. Frankie? You're... What did we do? You gave me peace. Thank you. I was doing... bad things. I I've done bad things. What have you done, Frankie? Locker number nine at August train station. Her head's in there. The dogs ate the rest of her. You've killed someone? No. I've killed people. The other girl is behind the gym in an industrial bin. She may be gone now. I liked her hair. Why are you telling us this? Because I want forgiveness, John. And because the police will never find me now, will they? Sorry, listeners. We're going to have to cut to a break. You're dead. I am dead. You buried me, don't you remember? But I'll be in touch... soon. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Our funding's running out, isn't it? Months ago. How do we pay it back? A radiothon. In bed with Poe and Monroe. Lurkers, if you're out there just lurking, then give us a sign. It's Millicent. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. If the station shuts down, I don't know what I'll do. You're safe now. Dark Nights. With Poe and Monroe. Our funding's running out, isn't it? Months ago. Poe! How are we still here? My rainy day savings. You can't use that. That's for you and your family. No, you're right. Think of it as a, as a loan. Okay, well, how do we pay it back? 
We send a seed of hope out to Lady August, and she blossoms it into fruitful returns. Or we could have a fundraiser. Yes, a radiothon. I'm thinking a 24-hour sponsored broadcast. We could call it In Bed with Poe and Monroe. Hmm. You think people will pay us to sleep together in bed for 24 hours? No, silly. You're not allowed to sleep. Did we really need that camera? Yes, Poe. It's proof that we stayed here for 24 hours. If the station shuts down, I don't know what I'll do. Everything will be fine, Alice. I've set up our donation pages and the amounts are already rolling in. How much do we have? Fifteen. Hundred? No, fifteen pounds. Wow. You weren't kidding. I don't mean to get your hopes up, but um, that was my donation. You donated 15 pounds yourself? People do it all the time. It's not cheating. I want us to stick around too. Thanks, Paul. Me too. Here we go. Welcome back, listeners. That was The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. We're now halfway through the show, and it's time to take your calls. Hmm. I can't see any callers. Is it working properly, Poe? It is the witching hour. Maybe everyone's gone to bed. So, we're totally alone. Hmm. We could have lurkers. What do you mean, lurkers? Uh, people that lurk, but never join in. They're probably out there right now. You mean listeners, right? Lurkers, if you're out there just lurking, then give us a sign. It touched me! What touched you, Alice? Something. It was probably just my foot. You're not under the covers, Poe. Hmm, strange. Nothing there. There was. Well, thank you, Lurkers. We couldn't get scared without you. Indeed. Hmm, I'm getting a very strong sense of déjà vu. What about you, Monroe? If you mean, have I ever been in bed with someone expecting greatness and then been sorely disappointed, then... Yeah, I'm getting déjà vu. It's that positive attitude that brings all the donors to the yard. Speaking of, dear residents of August, please keep donating, whatever you can afford. Let us keep making radio for you. There. We've got 15 minutes. What shall we do? Bathroom. Of course. Freshen up. Go back in. Be a queen. Be a tired, hallucinating queen.
Monroe, you femme fatale. I'm feeling pretty sleepy, actually. Your lips, so luscious. They're making me think things I should not. Well, lucky that's there, then. Ah, yes, the camera. Tiny piece of glass with an imaging sensor that protects us from evil. Are you okay? Comfortable? What are you gonna do? Kiss me or host a radio show? Look at you. You're perfect in every way. And I can never have you. Oh, let's not get into this now. You're like a beautiful butterfly. And the only way I get to keep you is to pin you into my collection. What? Easy girl, easy now, easy girl. There. We've got 15 minutes. What shall we do? <gasps> Did you fall asleep? It's only been 12 hours. 12 hours? Yes. You look like you've seen a ghost. I had a nightmare. Dreams and nightmares with Poe and Monroe. No. It was real. Are you okay? Do you want to stop? I'm fine. Sleep deprivation, it can play tricks with the mind. Yeah. I guess. So, 15 minutes. I need the bathroom. Again. Again? Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tap. She doesn't love you. Who are you? You know who I am. It's Millicent. <laughs> Millie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Millie, Millie. Billy, what are you doing here? Don't play games with me, Edgar. <laughs> Edgar? I'm not Edgar. Fine, Poe, have it your way. But what did you bring her for? The girl? Alice, she's... You need to leave. Leave? I can't leave. I died here, remember? Waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, my love. I've just waited so long for this moment, for this day. Bad dreams. Just bad dreams. Nope. No. It's a door. A door? A door. Ah, it was in the bleak December when each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Did you miss me? You're Lenore, aren't you? From the poem. Yes. You changed my name. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. Why are you here? Because you're dying, Poe. I'm here to collect 
about you. None of this, none of this is real, is it? You need to sleep now. I think that's probably the opposite of what I need to do. Rest. Can't you hear them calling you? I need to see Ellis. Murderer. Thank God. Where are we? What's happening? Is it a dream? What are you doing with that? Oh, no! There. We've got 15 minutes. What shall we do? <gasps> I can't believe you did that. What? Come with me. Where? We've got 15 minutes. Come with me. All right. Where are we going, Mrs? Poe? Are you really Poe? Of course, Governor. What's the jig? Poe. This can't be happening. Poe? Monroe? Who is she? That's your question. <laughs> yes, that's a bit strange, Alice. Perhaps should have led with, um, why are we tied up? Well, I thought maybe you could ask that. A lover's kiss, Edgar. This new one not up to snuff. What's she talking about? She thinks I'm the real Edgar Allan Poe. Well, you are named after him. I'm not Poe. I'm... Poe. What's the plan, Poe? Get out. I feel so weak, Ellis. The rope's too tight. I'd rather you stay tied up, to be honest. What? Why? She doesn't care about you. He's been killing me. What? Killing you, controlling me. He wishes he was Edgar. But he can never be. Never be. That's why he's killing me? No, that's your dream. You think he's killing you, smothering the person you could be. Don't listen to her, Ellis. I'm so tired. I'm happy it ends this way. With you. I'm frightened, Paul. I love you, Monroe. I love you too, Paul. Do you hear that, Paul? Do you hear it? John? John, we need to end this. How do we get out of here? Get <laughs> home.
We need to go quickly. <coughs> Fine. I don't know. <coughs> Tell them what happened, Poe. It's ghastly, really. Do they need to know? Yes, they do. <sighs> All right, then. Good boy. Monroe and I almost passed away last week from carbon monoxide poisoning. But we didn't. Yay. That much should be obvious. Our central heating system became blocked and started backing up carbon monoxide into the building. But lucky I got that detector, eh, Poe? Yes, indeed. But not so lucky for the young raven stuck in the flu. What? I didn't want to tell you because it's not very nice. But since you asked, the blockage was because a young raven had become stuck in the flu. No. What happened? From what the insurers could make out, it got stuck, and then its mate came in after it. Both of them died together. That's so sad. Everything dies. Well, they are together now. Somewhere in distant Aden. But in our realm, there will be never more. Let's change the subject. How much money do we raise for the station? Actually, the insurance paid out quite a lot of money. It seems the installers had also been negligent by not including a protective barrier on the flu, so... So the Ravens died to save our show? Yes, you could say that. Or a bungled building job almost killed us. So, glass half full, I'd say. Agreed. Perhaps we shouldn't spend so much time in bed together, Poe. Do you really mean that? Perhaps. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Yesterday in the August update, you said that Joe Watts had gone missing. He'd gone to a friend's house after school and hadn't come back. So what are you saying? We worked the case ourselves. You be good cop, and I'll be bad cop. Yes, I'd like to report a kidnapping, please. What are we supposed to do? I don't want to between the dots. I just see the final picture. Dark Nights. With Poe and Monroe. Caller on line three. Is that a bad thing? I changed the number after Frankie. He's the only one that knows it. Frankie's dead. We imagined all that. So we take the call then? <phone rings> Who is it? Hello? He will die if you let him. Frankie? The boy... The order you do things is... important. I I've seen them all. Is this a prank? Frankie's dead. Who is this? Listen, just listen. She 
She will lie to you. She will get away. She will kill the boy. You can't change that. What are we supposed to do? I don't have the lines between the dots. I just see the final picture. I don't like that, Poe. Me neither. And here's Yvette on line two. I love your show. Thanks, Yvette. I love your accent. What's your question? My question is, do you care about people? That's a strange question. It's an AMA, Munro. Ask me anything literally means ask me anything. Yeah, I know. But do we care about people? Yes, of course. Speak for yourself, Munro. I'm an animal lover myself. So you don't care about people? No, I do care about people, just I care about animals more. So you care about animals more than people? Present company excluded, of course. So that's a yes and a no. Wait one moment, Yvette. So if I was crossing the road at the same time as a cute bunny, and you could only swerve and save one of us, you would choose the bunny? I'd save you, obviously. Well, that's reassuring. I said I'd save you. And how long did you have to think about it? I like to consider things. You have a split second. Well, I wasn't timing it. Fine. Save me or a cat? You. You said that quickly to get on my good books, didn't you? No, I'm not a big cat fan. Oh! What? Does that answer your question, Yvette? Yes, I think so. I do have another dilemma. Maybe we can help you, Vet. I'd rather not say on air. That's all right. Happy to help. It's about time for a short break anyway. Stay on the line, Yvette. We'll be back in five minutes to answer more of your AMA questions. Until then, here's something slightly more interesting instead. We're off. Yvette? I've got a hostage. A hostage? He's a boy from August I. Why is he a hostage, Yvette? I had a crush on him, but he turned out to be unpleasant. So you kidnapped him? No, I drugged his drink. Is he okay, Yvette? Not really. He has not woken up yet. But now that I've spoken to you, I'm probably just going to let him die. I like animals more than people anyway. Like Paul. Yvette, I was joking with Monroe. Thank you for your help. Did you get the number? No, it's withheld. Maybe she was joking. We should call the police just in case. Tell them what was said. Really? I'm not sure. Why aren't you sure? I don't trust August police. They're the police? Exactly. We don't even know who's been kidnapped. Yes, we do. We do? Do you even listen to yourself reading the August update? Not really. I normally drift off. You drift off? I imagine myself at the opera. I'm on stage, and there's this beautiful young lady in the front row. But she's dressed like a cat. Okay. Let's circle back to that another day. So what are you saying? We work the case ourselves. That boy could get hurt. Not if we hurry up. Yesterday in the August update, you said that Joe Watts had gone missing. Ah yes, I remember. He'd gone to a friend's house after school and hadn't come back. What are the odds that Yvette has got Joe hostage? Almost as high as Yvette not being her actual name. I know the headmistress from the high school. Maybe we should talk to her. Or maybe the parents. They asked for the story to be run. Okay. Let's meet the parents. You have news about Joe. Is Joe still missing? Yeah, missing. Since yesterday. We thought it was a prank, but... We had a caller on the radio. A girl. 
she said she was holding Joe hostage. Live on the radio? No. We were off air. Good. Have you told the police? We um, thought that should be your decision. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, are you going to call the police then? I'll have to think about it. It's not always a straightforward decision, Poe. Although the police are supposed to be equipped for this sort of thing. If that's all, I've got an early start and I'd like to have some thinking time of my own. I do think it's a mistake not to call the police. Thank you for your opinion. If you're not going to call the police, you might as well let Monroe and myself look into it. Just tell me if you find out anything. Of course. Can I ask a few things? Sure. Can you tell us a bit about Joe? He's good. He is good. He did a marathon last month to raise money for Dorothy May. Dorothy May? Yeah, she's um, an 80-year-old with an acoustic neuroma. He helped her with it. He mows the lawns for the old folks around here for free. He's really good. Any reason someone might want to hurt him? I've been thinking about this over and over again, and I just can't think of anyone who would. Nice whistle. Yeah, that's Joe's. He's a runner. I run too. Is that him in the photo? Yes. That's when he just passed his driving test. Has he got a car? No, he prefers cycling. Do you think his dad killed him? You think Joe's dead? If Joe is dead, I bet his dad killed him. He's just upset. Why isn't he out looking for Joe himself? He's probably over the limit. He didn't seem that drunk. Functioning alcoholic. I tried that on for a while. Really? We haven't got time. Come on. Sorry, yes. Uh, what's next? I think we should meet the head teacher now. Where else is there to go? Are we breaking and entering? Did we break anything to get this far? No. All the doors were open. We could search the whole school. Deserted schools are creepy. Agreed. The register is for a Miss Clay, and Joseph Watts is one of her pupils. Where do you think Miss Clay resides? Who knows? Maybe she's staying at August Guest House. Sorry, it actually says here, August Guest House, room six. Oh. Well, you did very well, my love. Guest House it is then. Miss Gallagher owns it, doesn't she? I have no idea who that is. I'm gonna talk to Miss Gallagher. You find Miss Clay. Why don't I talk to Miss Gallagher, and you find Miss Clay? I don't trust you talking to other redheads. How do we know Miss Clay isn't a redhead? Hello? It's Alice. Alice Monroe? From the radio? Yeah, from the radio. What brings you here, Miss Monroe? One of your guests, actually. Well, I'm happy to chat, but you will need to help me strip. Oh. Okay. The 
bed? Yes, of course. We need to strip the bed. Yes. Yes. Sorry, that's how I do it at home. I'm assuming this is about Miss Clay. She is my only guest. Yes, the school teacher. One of her pupils has gone missing. Well, being held hostage actually. Hostage? We had a caller on the radio. Someone calling themselves Yvette said that they'd taken this boy, Joe Watts, hostage. Watts? Oh, yes. The family's been in August for a long time. They manufacture and sell fireworks, of all things. I love fireworks. Ghastly things. All that metal in our drinking water makes my thyroid throb just thinking about it. They're fun though, right? If you're an unethical hedonist. I will Google that when I get home. Do. So your guest, Miss Clay. School pays for her. She's very quiet. Doesn't watch television, which is odd. Goes out a lot at night. Any idea where? No. She usually seems happy when she gets back though. And she smells... earthy. Earthy? As in muddy? <laughs> Not on my carpets. And only if she's laundering her sheets before I get to them. Earthy though. Yes. Like the smell of fresh rain on grass. You must have a great sense of smell. Well, when you run a guest house, you develop all sorts of senses you didn't know you had. Smells earthy after a long night's out. Sounds weird, but it could be relevant. Particularly if Joe is being kept somewhere dirty or muddy. Tied. Beaten. Frightened. That's... Specific? <laughs> Too many uh, movies. <laughs> Is that all? For now. Thank you, Miss Gallagher. Not at all. And please do drop by again, especially if you need a room. If you think of anything that might help, please give me a call at the radio station. Surely you want me to call the police if I notice anything? I'd rather you called us first, if that's okay. Do the police know what's going on? His dad doesn't want the police to know. Very well, then. I shall do as I'm told. Thank you. I know we're going to find him. Hello? Yes, I'd like to report a kidnapping, please. Well, I didn't get much out of Miss Clay. She said Joe was a litterbug. So she's an eco-warrior? Yes. I wish we could have recycled our meeting, actually. How was Miss Gallagher? Kinda dominant. I liked her. Maybe I shouldn't let you hang around with other redheads. Maybe you shouldn't. Let's circle back to this later. Did she say anything useful at all about Joe? She said Joe's parents sold fireworks. Mm, I suppose that could be useful. Anything else? She said that Miss Clay goes out a lot at night and comes back smelling of earth. That's odd. Yeah, she has a great sense of smell. I'm sure it's a clue of Sherlockian proportions we'll probably never decipher. Seems we're out of leads. I'm still up for visiting the headmistress again. We could drill Miss Gallagher some more. Give it up, Alice. I'm trying. The headmistress, then? 
Miss Gallagher? Denied. Let's see Dallas Amber. Wanna play good cop, bad cop? Do we have to? Okay, you be good cop and I'll be bad cop. You're going to rough her up? No, just if you think she's not telling us everything, leave it to me and I'll get the goods. I'm not going to lie. I would. She's coming. Can I help you? Miss Umber, I was hoping you could help us with the missing pupil. I told the police everything yesterday. We just had a caller this evening claiming they kidnapped a boy. Any idea where he might be? Missing. So that's it? There's nothing else that you can tell us. That's it. You're lying, Dallas. About what? The missing kid. Kids. Kids. It's not a secret, is it? We've had two other children disappear. Joe's the third. Do the police know? Yeah. They know. The first girl was fostered, so although she went missing, it was... She's been abducted. No, just back on the street somewhere, anywhere. They're not here. So... They're not even looking for her. No, I expect they are. But I'm just a head teacher. Of a school that loses children. I don't lose children. They don't go missing on my watch. It's when they're out there in the big, ugly underbelly of August. I'm sorry, Miss Amber. We didn't mean to accuse you. It's quite all right, Mr. Pope. I know you're just trying to find Joe. Here, go and visit Wes Marie. She's currently off school for a spot of R and R. Her head's a bit mushy, but she purports to know where the missing children are. Thank you, Miss Amber. Miss Munro? Sorry, Miss Umber. Thank you. Noted. Let's go see Wes Marie then. Let's not rush this. I think it could be worth seeing Miss Clay too. Okay, home James. Let's talk to Miss Clay. Anything you say, milady. You can talk to the landlady while we're there. Divide and conquer. Should be interesting conversations. Mr. Pope, have you found Joe? I'm afraid not, but I do have a new lead. Does the name Wes Marie Bolton mean anything to you? Where's Marie? Yes. Do you know her? She was a pupil at the school. Was? She's on extended leave. Mental health issues, I believe. I take it you've not been to see her yet? No, I thought I'd come and talk to you first. Well, there's not much I can tell you about her, I'm afraid. Any relationship between Wes Marie and Joe that you know of? No. Sorry. I'm actually, um, headed out soon. Perhaps we can continue this chat tomorrow. Yes, of course. Um, going anywhere nice? Just for a walk. Was Wes Marie one of your pupils? No, no, I never spoke to her. Sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> Wes Marie's family stayed at the guest house once, talked about the missing. The missing? She didn't know any more than that. Miss Clay said she'd never spoken to her. A dead end. We've wasted time, Poe. We should have gone to Wes Marie first. Hindsight's always 20-20, Munro. There's no time for math, Poe. Let's go. Uh, agreed. Wes Marie, here we come.
People don't normally want to hear what I have to say. We do. We want to hear about Joe Watts. If I tell you what I think, I'll topple my meds. Well, we don't want to get you in trouble. Just tell us what you can. Don't be silly, Poe. We're not going to tell anyone. You can tell us anything. It's okay. You can trust us. We're from the radio. It's Miss Clay. She ran this after school club, Green for Life. I was in it. She made us make a list of those with the most environmental impact in our class. I did it. It was me. I made the list. Joe was third on it and the third person to go missing. You have to help and you need to. It's okay. We're gonna help. You just need to take a breath. She'll have him in the woods. At Hell Park. You have to hurry. She'll kill him if they don't pay. A ransom? His parents. He is being ransomed. If they pay, she'll donate the money to charity. It's sick. It's gone too far. And what if they don't pay? I don't know. I love when I saw it. What did you see, Westmary? Miss Clay. She was turning him into trees. A dryad. A what now? A dryad. Someone who's part human, part tree. We need to go. How, Park? Yeah. Where's Marie? Where's Marie? You did good. We're gonna save Joe. You wait here and we'll be back. He's alive. Only just. We need to get him out of here. Miss Clay? No, she's not here. You're safe. She's a tree. It's okay, Joe. We're going to get you home. You're home. Monroe, we have a fan. I'm just trying to untie you, Joe. Can, can you stand up for me? Monroe, help, please. It's okay. It's okay. I can walk. Are you hurt? No. <laughs> Just dizzy. Let's get you home. Joe's sleeping. The important thing is that he's safe. And I'm 50,000 poor. I'm sorry. I'm glad he's back. Thank you for getting to him so quickly. You didn't tell us there was a ransom. Well, there was, and I paid it. They said he'd be in the woods. Did Joe say anything about who kidnapped him? He said it was his teacher, Miss Clay. Nothing about Yvette? There was a French girl that was helping her. He didn't see her. I'm just glad he's home. Do you think they'll catch Miss Clay? Only if she wants to be caught. Do you think Joe was ever in any real danger? Probably. There's still two missing students. I thought environmentalists loved the planet, including all the humans on it. I think most of them do. They're always fanatics, Monroe, in everything. I'm going to plant a tree tomorrow. 
in our yard. Maybe we should look into solar panels. Can we even afford next month's rent? It's not next month yet. Do you think the whistle means anything? I blew one and couldn't hear anything. It's some kind of dog whistle. We never found out who a vet was either. Some things will always remain a mystery, Monroe. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. We have a special treat for you tonight. Madame Baratsky claims to have helped hundreds of clients discover their previous selves. Mm. Monroe, are you ready to meet your mm. past self? I was born ready. I'm Elizabeth. That's what you were going to ask, isn't it? Dark Nights. With Pearl and Monroe. Maybe we should have a safe word. If you're worried. I'm worried I won't like it. Then we should definitely have one. What do you think, Miss Baratsky? It's Madame. I'm sorry, Madame Baratsky. <clears throat> you must feel relaxed. So if a safe word would help, then yes. What should it be? Banana. Banana it is. Okay. Banana. 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 Sorry, I'm just practicing. Places, everyone. And we're live in three, two... Welcome back. As promised, listeners, we have a special treat for you tonight. Madame Baratsky is a past life regression therapist who claims to have helped hundreds of clients discover their previous selves, from ancient Egyptian concubines to Cold War spies. Welcome, Madame Baratsky. Thank you for having me. And of course, it wouldn't be our show without my better and more beautiful half. Say hello, Monroe. Hello, Monroe. Monroe has bravely volunteered to be put to sleep by Madame Baratsky this evening. You make it sound like euthanasia. She's going to wake you up again. Aren't you? Of course. Remind me again why you couldn't do it, Poe? Uh, dodgy knee. In just a moment, Madame Baratsky will put Monroe into a trance. I prefer hypnotic state. Into a hypnotic state. And we'll ask her to describe what she sees. Later on, we'll be taking your calls. Have you lived before? Do you remember any past lives? Or is it all just a money-making racket? <clears throat> Let us know, Munro. Yes, Bo? Are you ready to meet your past self? I was born ready. Let's hope you were reborn ready. Madame Baratsky, take it away. Now, Miss Munro, please relax. Close your eyes and focus on the sound of my voice. Listen to nothing else. 
with my voice. <sighs> Madame Baratsky has started the regression process. <clears throat> Focus on your arms. Feel how heavy they are. Feel them sink into the chair and pull you into the deep, deep dark. Let the darkness consume you. Good. She is fully relaxed and suggestible. Now you have crossed into a life you have lived before. Do you remember who you are? Yes. Monroe says she can remember a previous life. Shh. Do not rush. Let the world come to you. Let it reveal itself to you. Let the world envelop you. Step into the world and become your former self. Now tell me what you see. I'm Elizabeth. That's what you were going to ask, isn't it? Being right. It's a gift and a burden. Where's Dr. Decker? He's gone sailing. Weird. I've been coming here for months and I, I don't really know anything about him. What did he tell you about me? I'm not violent. I don't know why you'd think that. Let's play a game, Doctor. You're very accommodating for a therapist. You think of something, and I'll get it. You're thinking about waves, like the ocean. Don't say anything. I mean, you haven't said anything since you arrived. Do you believe me now? That I can read your mind? Don't say anything then. I'll keep doing my thing. Something happens at work. The dry cleaners in town. I can't switch it off. As soon as I lock eyes with a person, I get their thoughts. I'd like to be a brain surgeon, but I didn't apply myself enough. I am pretty nimble with an iron, though. <sighs> A 
Anyway, there's this guy who walks in with a suit. It's got a stain on the trousers near the zipper. And all he's thinking when he drops them off is, Sharon can't pick these up, Sharon can't pick these up. So he starts screaming at me that he needs the hour service or he'll have me fired. So I call the manager. My manager is also called Sharon, so it gets a bit confusing. I call Sharon over anyway. Sharon! Sharon! This guy's face is a picture, but he's holding it together. Sharon comes over preoccupied. She's thinking about the washing machines. She is the manager, so she normally does that, but this time was different. She was thinking about Nisha spinning away in one of them. The dry cleaning machines are big. You can fit someone in quite easily. You could probably fit a small person into a normal washing machine, actually, if they really tried. Anyway. The store manager hears shouting and comes over. The customer, let's call him Ed, says that we shouldn't be advertising something we can't deliver. Says he's a lawyer and he'll sue us. The store manager, whose name I intentionally forget, says he'll sort it out. Sharon, in the meantime, has gone ashen. I lock onto Sharon's eyes, and I see it again. Nisha, spinning away in a machine. At this point, I'm guessing Sharon has a fantasy about killing her? Ed finally gives in, throws his suit at me, and leaves. The manager looks at me and says, can you work your magic hands over his trousers? He's thinking of me topless, in a hot tub, but with way bigger breasts and some other things I'd rather not remember. Knowing people's thoughts eats your soul. <sighs> Fine. I guess I painted the picture, you might as well think it. Thanks for letting me wear a bra, though. They're still too big. Anyway, I take it round back to start working on it. And that's when I see her. Nisha. Like a ragdoll in a hurricane. Just spinning inside this big machine. Her face smashing against glass and metal. Blood pouring out of every opening. She's a mess. Can you see any jewelry? A ring, maybe? Yes. A ring. Good. I need you to get it for me. Do you understand? I understand. Well, this is fascinating, August. We'll be back with more of Monroe's past life in just a moment. What's going on? I'm helping Ellis uncover her past. Why does she need to get this ring? Oh, it's just a technique I use. I think you should bring her back now. It would be dangerous at this point. Then do it at whatever point it won't be. Quiet. I'm trying to concentrate.
They closed down the store for a while so the real cleaners could come in. They got rid of all the blood. It wasn't just blood. Her skull had split open and was grating against the metal drum. Some of her teeth. Sorry, Doctor. What did you want to know? Back. Perchloroethylene. It's what they use in dry cleaning machines. But Nisha didn't drown. The spin cycle broke her spinal cord. So she was paralyzed for a few minutes while her face mashed into everything. Shock probably got her first. Sharon's fingerprints were the only ones on the machine. Actually, hers and Nisha's. The police thought she'd struggled against the machine trying to fight Sharon. Nobody heard anything though. Yeah, dry cleaning machines have huge locks. There's no way of shutting yourself in. You really have to get a friend to help. Or manager. Sharon's in a psychiatric hospital now. They arrested Sharon for Nisha's murder. Sentenced to 18 years, one for each of Nisha's. Is that enough? Maybe murder should be punishable by death. People don't change, do they? They just get worse. I did see Sharon once after the trial. She didn't talk. But in her head, all I could see was Nisha going round and round. Her mind was literally stuck like a broken record. I watched the trial from the gallery. Not many people made eye contact with me, but Sharon did. She wanted to die. Really die. I don't think she killed Nisha. Sharon's defense. She said Jared killed Nisha, the umbrella man. Jared's the umbrella man. It's a nickname. We were on a work do and it started raining and then Jared pulls out this tiny umbrella out of nowhere and then gets handsy with any girl stupid enough to duck under it. Hence, Umbrella Man. Sharon's fingerprints were all over the machines and her husband was having sex with Nisha. That's all the jury needed. Nobody saw her do it though. She just didn't have a good enough lawyer. People with money get away with murder all the time though, don't they? Is there anything rich people can't buy? Nisha worked for Sharon as a housemaid. That's how she met the husband. It's so cliche. Nisha was desperate for money and he was desperate for attention. Nisha was good at cleaning, what can I say? Often I'd go to the back of the machines to hoover the lint trays out and Nisha was there with Jared, hoovering away already. I never told anyone this, but 
Nisha charged Sharon's husband for sex. I mean, she said she would have done it anyway, but since there was a chance of getting paid... I don't think Sharon knew. Would you pay someone to have sex with you, Doctor? People pay people to have sex with them all the time. Just not with money. They do it expecting love, or opportunity, time, companionship, or... orgasms. Nisha kissed me once, so... I slapped her. We were in the machine room. She said she'd got something in her eye and would I take a look? So I did. Her irises were lovely and big, dilated. And while I was looking, she just kissed me. But her mind, it was beautiful, shimmering. And then when she kissed me, it, it all fell away. All that was left was shame, fear, repulsion. So I slapped her. I saw Nisha's body in the machine. Her eyes were still open, crying blood. But I looked into them and there was peace. Nothing else, just peace. Nisha was asking for it, wasn't she? I mean, if your partner's cheating on you, you murder their fling, right? Exactly. She'd have killed her husband for sure. Why start with Nisha? It doesn't make any sense. I think... Jared killed Nisha. What did Nisha think about? <sighs> Nisha thought about Jared a lot. She hated him, but she also wanted to sleep with him at the same time. It's pretty common. I'm sure there's an interesting scientific term for it. Yeah, angry sex or anger sex. I'd probably take either right now. I told you about the Umbrella Man. She hated him. But in a lady doth protest too much kind of way. Maybe he killed her. I'm allergic to nuts. This is definitely normal milk. The milk's a bit funny. Maybe it's on the turn. What's happening? Shh. 
Monroe. <coughs> Banana. Huh? Banana! Why isn't it working? She has to say it, not you. Wake up! Monroe! Ellis! If anything happens to her... I... You can go in after her. Just sit down, please. How can I go in after her? I'd have to get in her brain. I'm very good at what I do. Sleep. There's a good boy. You want to see my ring? What? I don't remember wearing one. Shall I take it off? Maybe later. Jared, the Umbrella Man. He's weird, like a spider. Sharon ducked under his umbrella that time and his hands slithered around her body and kind of rested under her breast. Everyone knew he was touching it and Sharon just gave a weak smile and wriggled away. I tried to read his mind, but it was like a stereogram. His facial expression didn't change. Nothing. It was like he was wrapping his arms around his prey. He didn't seem to be particularly enjoying touching her breast, just the science. Jared's mind was a mess of coloured dots that didn't make any sense. I never knew what he was thinking, ever. There's only one other person I know that's like that. Yep, Dr. Decker. His mind's also mush. I actually came here today to tell him that I don't want any more sessions. He creeps me out. I already said that Jara killed Nisha, or something did. Do you? believe in the supernatural. Jared killed Nisha. I don't think I'm safe here. I saw it happen, but I couldn't tell the police. They were in the back room, Jared and Nisha. They were kissing and then she opened the door to the machine. She just got in and Jared, he shut it. He didn't have fingers, he had... I can't. Doctor, Doctor I'm sorry, I need, I need to, to go. go. I'm being... Ripped. Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. 
sorry. In an hour, you awake as if from some deep sleep. And I'll be gone. That should cover it. I'll see myself out. Dr. Decker. On that note, here's a message from our sponsor that you're sure to enjoy. The police are looking for Miss Baratsky. It's a shame she didn't stick around. Was she even licensed? She came highly recommended. From who? Herself, when she knocked on the door yesterday morning. You had a complete stranger take over my body? I didn't know what she was going to do. I feel so violated. I can't even tell our listeners. We were robbed. She literally took my wallet and your purse. I know. That was everything I had. And that wasn't all she took. What else is gone? My adoption papers. What? My adoption papers are missing. I didn't know you were adopted. Well, I am. I'm not ashamed to say it. Sorry, Poe, I, I wasn't suggesting that. It's unsettling when someone takes something so personal. Just who does she think she is? A past lives travel agent who robbed us whilst we were dreaming. But it wasn't a dream. You were there. You and me. Yes, just like Wizard of Oz. Maybe the reason the people looked familiar is because you made it all up yourself. So, are we dreaming now or is this real? I can't tell anymore. Want me to give you a squeeze? No, this is real. How can you be so sure? Because in my dreams you're much more of a charmer. And richer, I'd imagine. Too soon, Paul. Too soon. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. You're alive on air, line one. There was an animal in the road, howling like a wolf. He said it was a hairy animal. The size of a man. And the moon was full. We're going werewolf hunting. I'm Casper Light. You have to stay away from Wolf Lane. I'm sorry. You have no idea what's at stake. Dark Nights. With Poe and Monroe. Bless me, Father Poe, for I have sinned. Again, Munro? It's only been a week. I know. I just can't stop myself. What is it this time? I've been taking too many selfies. Well, they say pride cometh before a fall. Which is why I won't do it on a cliff. 
This isn't much of a confession, Munro. Haven't you got something more scandalous? You haven't seen the selfies. Sounds like Munro's beyond saving. But what have you been up to, August? It's time to come clean in... Confession Booth! Now remember, callers, no last names, no strings attached, and no consequences. Just call in to confess and let us absolve you of all of your sins. It's cheaper than therapy. And almost as effective. This isn't blasphemous, is it, Monroe? God, I hope not. Excellent. Oh, we have a caller on line one. Line one, you're through to the confession booth. Oh yeah, it's me. You're live on air, Line One. What's your name? Oh, uh, <clears throat> Beck. Welcome, Beck. Spill forth the burning secrets of your tormented soul. He means, what do you want to confess? I, um, crashed my boss's car. Oh, no. That's terrible. Were you hurt? No, no, but the, uh, the car was, uh... <laughs> Totaled. It was a Rolls! Ooh. Wow! I know! <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really bad. Well, how did it happen? Were you swerving to avoid something? Yeah, there was an animal in the road. It was uh, really hairy. It must have been uh, a bear or something else, because it was huge. A hairy bear? As big as a human. Honestly, maybe bigger. I remember because it was a full moon. A full moon, you say? Yeah, about a... about a month ago. Interesting. Well, that sounds mysterious, doesn't it, Poe? It does indeed. Thank you for your confession, Beck. Yes, thank you, Beck. It sounds like you're still traumatized by your experience, but I'm glad you weren't physically hurt. Father Poe says, You are forgiven. Oh. And we'll be back for more confessions after this message. Well, that was kind of strange, wasn't it, Poe? Yes, although I get the feeling he was angling for something. Really? Seemed genuine to me. You don't think... No, I'm being silly. You're not being silly, Alice. I suspect he was trying to make us think the same thing. He said it was a hairy animal. The size of a man. And the moon was full. You don't think there could be werewolves in August, do you? It does seem unlikely. Poe, you're not going to believe this, but there's a full moon tonight. Maybe we should leave early and check it out. Don't you have other plans? It's your birthday tomorrow. I wasn't planning on having an early night. Let me call Gwendolyn. Welcome back, listeners. This is Dark Nights with Poe. And Monroe. And we're in the confession booth. The confession booth. Line two, you're through to Father Poe. Bless me, Father Poe. For I have sinned. What is your name, child? Casper. And what dark anguish burns your mortal soul? Casper. He means, what would you like to confess? Nothing. There's actually something else I wanted to talk about. Okay. Off the air. Well, you'll have to wait um, a little while, Casper, until after the show. Well, I could wait until then, but... That might not give you enough time. Time for what? To save yourself. Well, you're in luck, Casper, as I have a story queued up. Listeners will be back in a few minutes after this spooky tale. Okay, Casper. It's just us now. What are we saving ourselves from this time? Don't go to Wolf Lane. We're not going to Wolf Lane. Well, we might be. The werewolf, remember? 
Yes, you are. But you shouldn't. And why is that, Casper? Because it will be the last time anyone sees you. Why? I can't give details, but something bad will happen if you go to Wolf Lane tonight. <sighs> you know, if you want us to take you seriously, perhaps elaborate on the something bad will happen bit. There's a billion other places you could go, and I'm just asking you to avoid one. But if you have a death wish, go to Wolf Lane. Is that a death threat, Casper? No. This is your future. Trust me. I know. Because you have a time machine? Because I was there when it happened. Well, we're certainly putting the dark and dark nights tonight, August. Maybe we should stop taking calls. Nonsense, Munro. What would this show be without the heady mix of terror and titillation provided by our callers? Well, this radio host has been titillated enough for one night, which is good, because it's time for Betty Buys. Sweet dreams, August. Thank you for listening. Yes, and remember, don't have nightmares. With Poe and Monroe. So what do you think? I think it's only a matter of time before Casper tries to kill us. He's just an attention seeker. So am I. I'm not trying to kill anyone though. So, what do you want to do about it? I don't know. He didn't really threaten us, so probably doesn't warrant getting the police involved. Are you sure? No. I just wish... I wish we could have one simple, uneventful, boring night. I don't think you'd like boring, Miss Monroe. You're right. Which is why we're going werewolf hunting. Casper didn't put you off? No. Telling me not to do something makes me want to do it twice as hard. Really? Well, definitely don't do the whistle swinger again. You like the whistle swinger, don't you? No. Even if it's twice as hard? We're not going to make it out of here if you keep talking like that. You really think we can see werewolves? It would be foolish to rule it out altogether. I know it's almost your birthday, but, well, a full moon waits for no man. Or werewoman. Exactly. I guess it could be romantic. You and me, huddled in the car, looking at the stars? They say Wolf Lane's the best place in August for stargazing. Do they? There's hardly any light pollution. That must be why the werewolves like it. Happy birthday, my love. It's not my birthday yet. You're such a tease, Munro. It's only teasing if I don't follow through. You don't need to do that. It's not a hold up. I beg to differ. This is for your own protection. Who are you? I'm Casper Light. I'm from the show. You just called into our radio show. Oh no. I must have come back again. Are you okay? No. This means I've already failed. What is it you want exactly? I work for a company called Coit Industries. They do experimental stuff. A scientist? No, I'm Eminem. The rapper? Mishaps and malfunctions. We clean up messes. I'm here to save you. Save us from what? Disassembly. You have to stay away from Wolf Lane. We're not going to Wolf Lane. You told us not to when you called, so we're going straight home. Isn't that right, Munro? Yeah. I'm so tired. <sighs> See? 
There's no need for any of this. Please, put the gun down. I'm sorry. You have no idea what's at stake. Don't try it. It always ends badly. Rock, paper, scissors? Uh, okay. Kigo. Where are we? Are you okay? We're in the sound booth at the studio. Why? I don't know. He's locked us in. I've tried the door already. Is there another way out? Death? I'm assuming Casper will let us out when he's done with us. Ugh. Happy birthday to me. You said you wanted to try something different this year. I'm sorry I had to do that. It's to keep you safe. I work for a company called Coit Industries. We specialize in speculative technology. I say we, the science team do the heavy lifting. I'm just m and mishaps and malfunctions. It's my job to clean up the results. Normally I don't intervene, just let it happen, then clear up. But people will still be listening to you years from now because I've saved you. So, the whole werewolves thing. I don't want to wake up alone. I don't get it. Let's face it, birthday or not, you'd have gone home to your wife after the show. I know you'd have stayed late and we'd have had some fun, but eventually you'd leave. Like you always do. Monroe. I just wanted someone to wake up with. To wish me happy birthday and give me a hug. But what's that got to do with Wolf Lane? Nothing. It doesn't matter now. Maybe if you get a time machine, you'll find out. Okay, it's like this. Around midnight, you're on Wolf Lane. At the same time, an organization I can't name is testing a, an experimental weapon. The test glitches, you get fried, and m and are called in for disposal. Because it's not your normal run-of-the-mill explosion. Tomorrow, the news spreads that you've vanished. You're never found. Time travel is Coit's most profitable service. The key is subtlety. You don't use it to kill Hitler. You use it to manipulate election results, justify wars, or in my case, rescue two local radio hosts so you can keep listening to their show. You're welcome, by the way. Let us out! Let us out! No point yelling, Munro. It's soundproof, in and out. Fine. Let's use our mind power to open the door. So that is how the world ends. You didn't hear it from me. I wish you'd say something. I'm just gonna go. I'll leave it another minute just to be safe though. Good luck, Poe and Monroe. Did I just open that with my mind? Try locking it again. Or we could just leave.
Yes, best not to mess with telekinesis. Ladies first. Thanks, Poe. Let's hope Casper isn't out there. Wait. Sorry, I forgot. There's still time to go to Wolf Lane, if you'd like. You're driving. You're live on air, Line One. What should we call you? Oh yeah, it's me. Whoa, hey! Hang up! Help! He's got a gun! Hang up! Back? Don't! I can't let you tell them where to go. Don't! Don't! Back? Back? Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Welcome back to Radio August Treasure Hunt, sponsored by August Museum. Good news, Monroe only has one more capsule to plant. Don't worry, you'll not be hungry for much longer. If you can fall out of love, we can fall out of here. She doesn't want you to get out. She wants to eat souls. <laughs> Dark Nights. With Pearl and Monroe. Extraordinary. What is your wish? A wish, you say? Let me think. I wish that Alice Munro never stops loving me. How does it work? It's magic, isn't it? Yes, some kind of sensor. Go on, ask it something. Okay. Um. Rose, are you stuck in there? No. Are you stuck out there? It asks questions. It's like it's alive. How about this then, Rose? What's the square root of 1,296? She's confused. I'll do a reboot. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's wonderful. I'm sure August will love it. Museums aren't what they used to be, Pam. No. They're much rarer than ever before. Too kind. Let me get those prizes for you. Of course. Happy to help. Let's call it payment for that wish. 
Yes. Monroe will be pleased with my wish. Good luck, little fella. Treasure buried. Remind me why this is my job again? You have smaller fingers than me, Monroe, and you can get into smaller spaces. So it's nothing to do with you having the warm, cozy studio then? Absolutely not. Uh, how many capsules to go? Are we getting paid for this? It's marketing, Munro. Promoting the museum makes us look good. I suppose any publicity is good publicity. I've got one left. Good work, Munro. Going live in three, two... Welcome back, listeners. Good news, Munro only has one more capsule to plant. That's right, Poe. I'm almost done. And then our listeners can start trying to find them. Yes, thanks to the generosity of August Museum, you could find a buried treasure. Uh, tell them what's in the capsules, Monroe. Only the best treasure of all, Poe. A free family ticket to August Museum. And that's not all. One lucky capsule has a secret treasure in it, hidden by the curator himself. I wonder what that is, Poe. Perhaps it's edible, like fine caviar. Great. I've been hiding fish eggs. Did one of them feel different to the others, Monroe? No, not really. Well, handle them carefully, in case they open a portal to another world. Could do with one. Okay then, sounds like Monroe is getting a little frosty. Time for these words from our sponsors. Remember, Monroe, if you speak with a smile, people know you're smiling. I hate you. Does that sound happy? Actually, yes, it does. You can tell what shape your mouth is in. Dehydrated. I think I'm gonna keep this last one, Poe. Uh, but we're supposed to be hiding all ten. I know, but we could give it away live on air. I suppose. Okay. Bring it back with you, then. On my way. Welcome back, listeners. It's time to find the treasure. Get the geocaching app. Search for hashtag Poe and Monroe, no spaces, and join the hunt. If you see Monroe, tell her dinner's in the dog. Because you cooked it. I'm an exceptional cook. Monroe, on the other hand, burns everything. Like our friendship. Sorry, Monroe. You know I love you, really. Let's have a little break whilst Monroe gets back to the studio. Good luck, August. Yes, good luck. Don't worry, Rose, you'll not be hungry for much longer. Sorry, 
sorry about the mood. It just felt lonely. You're not alone, Alice. You've got me. I don't know, do I? Of course you do. You know how much I care for you. And your wife? It's complicated, you know that. The thing is, I'm not sure it is. What are you saying? Nothing. I'm just tired, I guess. What we have is special, the most special thing. And your marriage? It's Schrodinger's marriage. I'm simultaneously married and not married at the same time. No, Poe, you're married. There's a piece of paper that states exactly where you are at this current point in time. Alice, we're going live. Let me. Three, two... Welcome back to Radio August's Treasure Hunt, sponsored by August Museum. Earlier today, I placed nine capsules in and around town for you lovely listeners to find, and one of them was sealed by the curator himself. Find that capsule and you'll win. A hot dinner date with me, Alice Monroe. Monroe, that's... What if it's a girl? Oh. I hadn't thought about that. I would love that, actually. Did you mean hot dinner as in the food is hot? Or a hot date? Well, I suppose that depends on who wins, doesn't it, Poe? Astounding. Monroe is offering a dinner date with the first person who finds the curator's capsule. Good luck, I suppose. Oh, and spoiler alert, I wasn't that great at hiding them. Finding them should be easy. Much like getting a date with you, then. You could always try and find it yourself, Poe. But I already have so much of you already, Monroe. Oh, well, look, we have our first caller. Hello, Eric. What's happening? Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, Monroe. Hi, Eric. Hi. I am such a big fan. Oh, I'm doing a heart shape with my fingers, but you can't see it. I found a capsule. Which one? Outside the doctor's surgery, underneath the bench. That's one of ours. Crack it open, Eric, and let us know what's inside. Okay. Well, while Eric's trying to work out what he's won, tell us more about the doctor's surgery, Monroe. Okay. It's a general practice. I don't actually go there. But I'm sure it's very nice. Where do you go? I haven't needed to see a doctor since I got to August. I'm more of a holistic girl anyway. Okay, let's put a pit in that then. Um, I wonder how Eric's doing. Eric? Eric, what did you find? Eric? I can't hear anything, Poe. Maybe his phone ran out of battery. Weird. Shall we take the next one? You're live on Radio August. I love you, Monroe. Oh, that's so sweet. Do I win a date? <laughs> sure, if you find the curator's prize. I'm at the railway crossing. I'm over to the capsule now! What was that? Sounds like he dropped the phone. We didn't even get their name. They'll be back on in a minute. Great. Why don't you tell us about the railway station while we wait? Of course. August Railway Station was built in 1936 by the Thomas Moore Clay and Brick Company. The very first train route was between Birmingham and August and all the villages in between. It closed down about five years ago because, quite frankly, not many people wanted to come to August. Did I ever say that you're a know-it-all? Not live on air, but I'll take a compliment anywhere it's served. Oh. I don't think Caller 2 is coming back. Hmm. 
two in a row. If we lose three callers, that's a record. Well, there is one on the line. Third time lucky? Caller, you're live on Radio August. Hi, it's Jazz. I'm at the crossroads. Hey, Jazz, great to meet you. Have you found a capsule? Yep, it was by the post box. That's one of ours. Now, remember, once you've opened it, try not to lose battery or get cut off or disappear. Got it. Opening it now. Seriously? This is too strange, Monroe. Life is strange, Poe. No, something's not right. What are you gonna do about it? Maybe we should open the capsule we've got. Don't jinx it. We've got a fourth caller. Let's try them. Fine. Caller 4. You're live on Radio August. Hi, Paul. It's Izzy. Hello, Izzy. Uh, what's that short for? Izzy. Yes? It's, it's short for Izzy. That's my name. Silly me. Where are you, Izzy? I'm at the old well in Briarley. Is it in the bucket? <laughs> it's not in the bucket, Izzy. It is nearby, though. All right, now have a look. Please call in once you've found the capsules, not when you're in the general vicinity. Found it! Excellent. Now, take a look inside and tell us what you find. Is he? Sorry. Oh, we thought we'd lost you. No, the lid was stuck. I'm opening it now. Is he? Is he? We should open our capsule, Munro. Maybe someone's pranking us. To what end? I don't know. And we'll be back on the hour with the next August update. Until then, stay safe, August. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. Oh dear. I don't like the sound of that. I just remembered I made a wish today. What did you wish for? It was trivial. I honestly can't remember. Did it have anything to do with these capsules? The curator did say something about the capsules being payment for the wish. And you're telling me this now? It just seemed like a little bit of fun at the time. The painting was talking. You made a wish with a talking painting. Now you're saying it. that does sound a little suspicious, doesn't it? You think? Maybe I should go and see the curator again. I want to see what's in the capsule. Monroe, it could be dangerous. That's my little name, honey. Where are we, Poe? I don't know. But wherever we are, it looks pretty old. I wonder why we're here. What did you wish for? Um... Ah, uh, yes. Go on. I wished that you'd never stop loving me. Hello, Miss Monroe, Mr. Pope. This is your wish. Are you Rose? Where are we? We're here. <laughs> That's funny, Rose. Where is here? In Nigunapate. Can you let us out, please? No. You must love him. Forever. Let us out, or you're getting a smack, young lady. <laughs> Pope? Don't risk it. We need to work out what's going on. Adios, amigos. Stay.
How do we get out? I don't think we're meant to, Alice. This is my wish. Well, it's not my wish. How do I get out? Maybe there's something we can use in this room. What are you looking for? I don't know. The furniture and decoration in this place are eclectic. What does eclectic mean again? Diverse. A mix. It's basically an interior designer's nightmare. That's what I studied at college. Interior design? Yeah. I thought I'd decorate the apartments of the rich and famous when I got older. And did you? No. I was usually doing the walk of shame from them. Nice image. Girls gotta make mistakes. If we're spending eternity here, I hope the menu's a la carte. Do we need to eat? I'm not hungry. Hmm. I'm not hungry either. That's unusual for you. What are you trying to say, Poe? Nothing, just, uh, you, um, tend to graze a lot. Graze? Like a cow? I love the way you eat. Sorry. I'm getting crabby. Pun intended. No. What are you going to do with that? Pick the lock? There is no lock. Because there is no door. Do you think time passes differently here? I'm assuming we're both asleep, so yeah. Perception is reality though, my brother. So you think this is real? Who knows? Sometimes it's better not knowing. That's what my mom used to say. She never told me anything. I've never met your mother. Let's just say she's dead. Is she? Perception is reality, Poe. Yes, I had that coming. Uh, what didn't she tell you? Relatives dying. Her and dad divorcing. Dad dying. Her remarrying. The list goes on, really. That's awful. I, I, I never knew about those things. It's okay. Time passes. Do you think you look like your mother when you get older? I hope not. I don't suppose you have a picture of her, do you? Oh, gross! Sorry, got carried away. I'll keep looking. You know, I collected antique vases at one point. Did they look like that? No, they were very expensive. One-of-a-kind treasures. Like me? Yes, exactly like you. What made you stop? Breakage. <coughs> Ooh, 
We need to find a proper sponsor for Radio August. I'll add it to the list, along with getting out of here. It's not just your responsibility. Money is evil, isn't it? Only if you don't have it. Only if you do have it. Get me out of here and I'll show you a good time without money. Do you think she's watching us, Rose? I don't know. I'm just sitting here looking pretty. You're doing an excellent job. I'm letting the side down, as per usual. Don't be so hard on yourself. Leave that to me. That sounds lovely. It's supposed to be relaxing, to help you meditate. Can it open a doorway? Only to one's mind. Maybe if we set fire to the place, she will set us free. That's not really an experiment I'd be into. She'd probably just let us burn. Well, that would be one way out. <sighs> Do you remember Huntington Beach? Yeah. You refused to go into the sea or take off your shoes. And as a consequence, I got shoes full of sand. You should take my advice more often. Hindsight's 2020, Monroe. Didn't see this coming. I'm so sorry. So sorry. What happened? I thought if I hit you over the head, Rose would see that I didn't love you anymore, and it would break the wish. I think I see where you're coming from. But when you crumpled to the floor, I felt so bad. Yes, perhaps didn't think that one quite far enough through. I'm so sorry, John. Are you okay? I'm fine, Alice. Just let me get to my feet. Uh. Are you sure? I'm sure. You... you can stay here. But I don't want you to fall, Poe. I'll be right behind you. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of. You... you can stay here, okay? Okay. I think you may actually be onto something there, Manro. I am? The wish. We need to break it. How do we do that? You have got to stop loving me. Who said I loved you anyway? I'm being serious, Alice. If you can fall out of love, we can fall out of here. So, you're just going to hurl insults at me? Not necessarily. I can undermine our relationship pragmatically. It's already working. Hold that thought.
Gwendolyn and I used to love the beach. You never wanted to go with me. It reminds me of her. Of how happy I was with her. Past tense. How happy I am with her. No, you're not. She told me I could see other women. No, she didn't. She doesn't care about you, Alice. She knows it's her I go home to. I've cheated on my wife before, you know. No, I did not know that. Why don't you enlighten me? I sleep with all my co-stars. Wasn't one of them a guy? I sleep with all my co-stars. Yeah, of course you do. Have I ever told you how stunning you look, my girl? Where are you going with this poem? Just what happens when we get older? Retirement? I'm not sure I can love you as much when your looks go. I know you're being mean deliberately, Poe. Are you a gold digger, Monroe? No. What money do you have anyway? So you're interested in how wealthy I am? No. I've started drinking again. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Why? Because I'm unhappy with you. This isn't funny, John. It's not meant to be. Please stop this. No, this is it, Munro. Get angry, hate me! I do hate you, you bastard! Silence! No more talking. Till I say, I'll kill both of you, over and over again. What just happened? I don't know. Were you... In a painting? Yes, we had the same dream. Maybe there were chemicals in the capsules. Yes, that caused a joint hallucination that lasted much longer than the time we've been away. Do you think all the capsules are the same? Probably. 
You go and get the remaining capsules. I'll visit the curator. You're so mean to me. Sorry, Monroe. Let's just go quickly, whilst we still can. Sorry, August. Sorry. Rose? Miss me? How are you here? This whole place. It's my prison. Where are the others? I ate them. No. No, you didn't. You looking for this? Don't open it! Be careful what you wish for, Manuo. Four residents of August have been reported missing. And they were all listeners looking for our geocached capsules. The remaining capsules have been recovered and are in police custody. We'll have live updates as and when they come in. In related news, a man posing as the curator of August Museum is also wanted for questioning by the police. He's potentially dangerous, so do not approach him. Curator Jones is described as tall, dark and mysterious. Sounds like you, Poe. Don't give people the idea it was me. Sorry. No, I can vouch for Poe's whereabouts last night. And most nights, actually. Should we tell them what happened, Munro? I'm not sure they're ready. Ah, yes. Let's take a quick break now, then, shall we? Ellis, ratings. You can't say things like that on air. Is that all you care about? Ratings? No. I, I thought that's what you cared about. Being a star, turning Radio August into your platform. That's not me, Poe. I care about you. Whatever you want. You care about me? Care. I'm scared, Munro. Of what? If I take it back, if, if that stupid wish somehow comes true again. That's just convenient, isn't it? We should have stayed in that room. Just the two of us. What about the missing people? They're missing. The police will find them. No, they won't, Poe. And I feel responsible. We're both responsible. You don't know what happened. Just some delusions. Well, I'm gonna help look. Are you coming with me? Or do you just care about Radio August? You. I always choose you. Where to, Munro? Adventure, Poe. Always adventure.
with Pearl and Monroe.